My lab studies how plants use light as a source of information. We all know that plants use light as a source of energy through photosynthesis, but plants also have a suite of photoreceptors that read their light environment and then control or modulate their growth and development based on the changing light environment. Some plants flower in the fall, other plants flower in the spring by reading changes in day length. Some plants love being in the sun and will grow out of the shade or away from the shade of other plants by reading the change in the light environment that's in the shade of a plant or reflected off of a plant mm -hmm. versus the light environment in the direct sunlight. Mm -hmm. uh, conversely, other plants want to be in the shade and not in the direct sunlight and will change leaf angle or chloroplast movement in order to optimize growth under the low light conditions. So all of these photoreceptors interact with endogenous hormone pathways and change gene expression in the plant. The impact that this has on crop biotechnology, from my point of view, is that these photoreceptors and the hormone pathways regulate plant stature, the size of a plant. And by ma manipulating size of the plant, we may be able to increase yield. For example, some crop plants actually increase yield or harvestable yield per acre by being semi-dwarf. And many of these semi-dwarf varieties were developed by uh, Vogel and other wheat breeders here at Washington State University. And that was actually part of what we consider to be the green revolution. I said before that plants use light for photosynthetic energy. And the primary colors that they use for photosynthesis are blue and red. They don't use green as much as they do red, which is why we see a green leaf. Most of the red and blue light is absorbed by the leaves. The, some of the green light is reflected, and so we see that, red, that green leaf. They also reflect far red light, which is almost infrared light. Now, our eyes are not sensitive to far red light, but the photoreceptors in the plant that read its light, light environment are sensitive to far red light. So what a plant sees, sees with its photoreceptors is an enrichment in far red light under the shade of another plant. And that triggers or activates a set of these photoreceptors that then leads to change in growth and development. If you look at photographs that, of plants that were taken with infrared sensitive film, the leaves of the plants look silver. They look incredibly bright. They're blindingly bright. And that's what a plant sees in its light environment. So that's being reflected off of the neighboring plants. And that's how a tomato plant can detect that it's closer or farther away from another tomato plant, or any other plant for that matter, by reading that change in red and far red light. Red is used for photosynthesis. Far red light is not. In sunlight, you have an equal amount of red and far red light. Under the shade of a tree, you have an enrichment in far red light because the red light has been absorbed for photosynthesis. One of my favorite times to look at trees in general is in the winter time. Because when you look at the branching pattern of a tree when it has no leaves, you'll notice that there's a degree of order to that. That the branches are to some degree equally spaced from each other. And obviously that's because a tree is going to fill in the gaps in its canopy with new leaves in order to be as efficient as possible with photosynthesis. You don't see that during the summer when the leaves are there, mm -hmm. but in the wintertime you can see how the, leave, how the branches have filled in the gaps of, say, where a branch was pruned before or where a branch fell off in a storm. In San Diego, we were driving along and I saw palm trees and I saw the same phenomenon. A lot of palm trees are grown in clumps because they're aesthetically pleasing that way. And there was a park down by Mission Bay that had these clumps of palm trees grown in threes. And you could see that the palm trees, by the shape of their stems, had grown away from each other due to shade avoidance from the canopy at the top of the palm. And once they had grown far enough away from each other, because that canopy stays the same every year, they went parallel. And now they grow up parallel to each other. And being a good scientist, I also noticed that there were some palm trees that were growing by themselves, not in clumps of three, and those grow straight up from the very beginning. 
because they're not avoiding any nearby plants. I like to grow food in my garden, and maybe that's where I'm a crop uh, person right now. And I grow tomatoes, we all grow tomatoes, and I try to grow them as, I try to have as high a yield as possible. Now when you look on the tomato packet, it tells you how far apart to grow the plants. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I follow those directions and sometimes I don't. When I don't follow those directions, what happens is the tomatoes detect their neighboring tomatoes by the far red light that is reflected off of the leaves of the neighboring plants. And they put more of their energy into stem growth than into fruit development. They grow like vines, they fall over, and they grow away from the other plants and flower earlier. When I try that, in other words, when I don't follow the directions, I generally find that I don't get the same yield that I do when I follow directions. Thank you.